Greetings. Welcome to Terra Prime Live. Darth Anonymous here. Or not joining me. Um, today we're discussing Makashi. Makashi Madness. So, or Makashi, or however you want to pronounce this made-up word of ours. Anyway, so, um, let us introduce our panel for this evening. We've got our, our uh, resident sentinel, Master Willows. Craig Page, how you doing, Craig? Great. I'm doing all right. Hello and good evening. Yes. All right. The next we have our uh, guardian path headmaster Nero, resident Makashi, go-to guy. How's it going? Go-to guy. How's it going? <laughs> going good, guys. Good. Glad to be here. Excellent. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Okay, <clears throat> so yes, we are here to talk about Makashi, the second form, form the contention form, the way of the Minoc. Um, we'll, let, we'll let you handle the Minoc one there, Craig. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we can talk about uh, um, some of the other stuff, definitely. So, the contention form, um, considered to be saber-to-saber -saber combat, right? So it's all going to be based on everything about this guy. So how it works, the physics of it, and how it reacts to another thing just like it. You know, in a one-on-one -on -one dueling sense. Right, exactly. So weapon-to-weapon -weapon type of uh, combat. Not weapon-to-unarmed, not weapon-to-gun. Well, I mean, well, sword-to-gun. Saber-to-saber. So we're going to be talking about dueling styles. So obviously this is, this is going to have a lot of information which is directly applicable to everything that we do. Um, it is... Uh, lots of people talk about how it's connected to fencing, and fencing is definitely one of the uh, types of styles that is um, definitely uh, I don't know what you say, a part of it or something that can easily be adapted to it. It's, it's, it's an easy to understand description. Right. Yeah. So, um, so we have that, um, but obviously I'm not coming from a fencing background. Um, we do have some fencing here. We do have, of course, fencing uh, with us in uh, Jer. So we will talk about where those kind of overlap, but we're when we're talking about the Makashi formula here, we're going to be talking really about more universal swordplay principles. Right? These can be applied one-handed or two-handed. We'll kind of go through that. Um, but it's, it's, it's really going to be based mainly on the sword and the handling of it. And that's not going to differ too much from tradition to tradition um, until you start getting into actually changing the weapon where you only have a single cutting edge, you've got mechanical advantage in one area, all of that kind of thing, these arts are going to pretty much transfer directly over here to this weapon. And now that we have this weapon, we have an analog which we can then go as universal. So let's first talk about how we're going to divide up the weapon here in our system. And we've got a couple of things here. We talked about this last week. Um, We've got two surfaces right here. Um, the idea is going to be something we call uh, spheres. Now, spheres are the different um, points of engagement that we're going to describe in our head when we're holding our weapon. Right? Here at the tip, the sphere that if I move it like this, I'm creating a circle around me like that, and if I hold it steady, I'm moving the hilt, that circle right there and that sphere we call the corona. Okay. This middle part right in the center, or where uh, we talked about it last week, okay, is going to describe something a little bit closer into us, which we call the chromosphere. And then here at the hilt, we call that the photosphere. Now, those three spheres then divide the blade into two pieces. The quick up here, and the strong down here. 
and these are base, the basic uh, surfaces that we're going to deal deal with. We're going to be when we're parrying, we're going to think about parrying with the strong most of the time, and wielding from the corona, and that means keeping the tip relatively still and moving the hilt around to maximize, and if you can see here, we're going to maximize the amount of coverage that we can get around our body without letting our weapon drop off of our center line. Okay? So that's the, the idea there. Okay? Um, then we can wield it in like this. This is good for binding and any type of connecting, disarms, that kind of thing. All very, very uh, useful. With that, um, let's see what else. Um, the, the, the final one. What are we doing once we get in? Right. Once, once, once we get in here. Right. Is we're obviously going to be attacking, and so that's this right here. The major surface that we're going to be dealing with is this one right here, and I am quickly losing battery. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so yes, quick we're going to be doing lots of attacking with, strong we're going to be doing lots of parrying with, and when we want to do a lot with this, we keep this still. We want to do a lot with this, we keep this still. So this is a basic kind of teeter-totter motion. When we want to use this, if we come in here and move around, then we move both the tip and the hilt and try to keep this as steady here. And that's because I want to keep my blade between me and him and his blade, really. If we're going to sum this up, there are three pivot points. On the right. We're pivoting on the tip, we're pivoting at the midpoint, and we're pivoting roughly, roughly in the area of, of our hand on the tip. Right. Exactly. Right. So, um, and that's basically how this this goes. When you have a, we found that when you have a, a, a basic stunt lightsaber hilt, uh, general, you know, the average weight or so, the uh, the balance point will be pretty pretty good as far as where you want it. You know, kind of realistically speaking, kind of up here on the blade. Right. Now that's with a heavy grade blade. If you use a mid grade, it's going to bring it down in here. I know a lot of people really like it right by the hand because it makes this easier. Here's a mid grade. Right. right. The balance point is right in the hilt. Right. Okay. If it makes this easier and it makes this feel lighter, so when I'm holding it out like this, it doesn't feel like it's pulling you down a lot or as much. But when you got when you uh, if you move the, uh, the the balance point up here into the blade a little bit, and you have a little pull, you have a little bit of help when you start wielding it really quick, right? And so we're not necessarily going to just wield it right from the hand, but it is going to be kind of hand. It's, it's close to, but we've we've, uh, we've talked a little bit about the going going into Suresu. Um, the, the orbits mm -hmm. and how the rotation point isn't at your hand. The rotation point is a little bit out on the plane. Right. And that's where that balance point is. Yep. Okay. Uh, anything to add, guys? Looking good so far. Okay. Take into right. account lag. Jared, do you have anything to right. account lag? Yeah. No, it's 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 good so far. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I do definitely have a bit of a lag, so I apologize for that. It's going to be all thrown off, but um, no, it's it's um, it's good. I, I tend to prefer mid grade blades just because I'm used to such a light blade with with a fencing weapon that it's just it it totally throws me off with the heavy grade. But it's it, you can you can do these, and it's a fine training weapon too. Uh, just because it, it is more weighted like a, a true steel weapon. Um, so that's that's a good point to make. And uh, yeah, that's, that's good. Yep. 
Yeah, and we're not. I'm not um, like the mid grade blades. Like, if you want something that's going to be quicker and more reactive, definitely. You know, when we're talking about the dueling, especially when we're dealing do, um, talking about our system here, um, adults are going to have to use the, the, the heavy grades because mid grades just bend too much underneath the, that amount of uh, force. So it's not that it's not that they're it's not that they're likely to break. We, we know the mid grade grades are really. Right, or more of like false touches. And, yeah, and touches. yeah it's, it just doesn't mimic a true weapon as, as much in terms of flexibility. It's going to be doing a lot of right. wobbling. Right. That's, that's one thing I'm not a huge, huge fan of, but it comes with the territory. You give up the weight, you give up the, uh, the sturdiness of the blade, the thickness. So. Yeah. All right. So... Um, should we go from here now? Did we have, did we have any questions? We don't have any questions per se. Lots of people exciting, excited about it. Um, we did we did have one uh, sort of question. You know, um, I don't know if it's a question or more of a general general idea. But if we could go over the offensive nature of Akashi more. Um, because it's, what we've been talking about has been mainly defensive. I don't know exactly what that means, but we can give it a shot. Um, let's talk about a, a, a little bit more about the formula and how this is going to re, how this is going to kind of uh, react with, with with what you do. Um, so. One thing about it is, is we are going to stay in, in in our system what we what we call this with the the uh, zone five leg forward, right? Is attack stance, and the reason we call it attack stance is because when we turn our shoulders to match our hips, that gives us the most reach, right? We can reach way out there. Okay. When we go the other way. We have to go across our body, so we give up a little bit of that. Most of the Makashi stuff is going to be done in attack stance. Okay, so we're going to be like this. Now you can do a more weighted forward or backward kind of uh, orientation if you'd like, um, and it's going to use mainly the hot slide. So it's moving like this and back like this. Okay, so we're going to be doing short back and forth. Um, the other thing we'll do is the hyper step, right? Where we're going to bring this foot in, we bring this foot out, jump forward, and that step into a lunge. That way. Okay. All together, it's just like that. So, and that's something you see a lot in fencing and in these types of styles. Um, but it's not just for that. The reason you do that is for hey, tactical purposes. Yep, tactical purposes. It, 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 it gains you power. It does a lot of things. Um, the other thing we're going to do is cross step. Right. So we can cross step in front, which is that way, or we can cross step behind, which is that way. Okay. Since we're only going to be kneeling coming out of a tax stance, a full step is to step forward and end in a tax stance. So, one, like that, and then two. Now, as far as the steps go, we can then take any of those, which is a very simple group of steps, right, and then combine them with a couple of... Uh, extra little positions that can give us some more tactical advantage. With the cross step, we can take the cross step and do kind of a false uh, a false crossing step using the blade and coming through like that. That gives us this right here, but it actually, you see, increases the range so we can get longer that way okay 
Um, the other way is you can come down here, which can, for parrying, as we, as we come through like this, and then allow you to, to, uh, to spring up within their stance. Let's try it here. So, like that. Okay. So using that kind of dynamic of crossing up and then opening up um, to move almost inchworm-like. Um, that would be the uh, oh, speed inchworm. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, so, uh, yes, inchworm form. Maybe that's what the Minot, the whole Minox thing is. Okay, you, you, I, I got to know, Greg, Minox, really? Um, actually, the uh, the animal that Form Two is associated with is the Isalamiri. Oh, uh, right, my, right. Minoc my, my is Sarisu. Uh, the Isalamiri are, um, if you've read the Thrawn trilogy in the Expanded Universe, that's where the Isalamiri come in. They're like these little arboreal, iguana-looking things that actually manage to make themselves invisible to the Force. because, um, And that's their main trait, because certain animals on their planet hunt down Force-sensitive creatures. So they make these little Force bubbles. And so that's basically the so the whole connection of the Asalamiri and the and Makashi is you are you're not dealing with the you're dealing with the skill of the person. You're not dealing with the power of the person in terms of the force. You you rely on skill and skill alone. So it's 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 a matter of uh, by that interpretation, it's a matter of skill, finesse, and yeah. le with less concern about being more physically powerful. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Also, uh, yep. also, um, <clears throat> by, by the same token, it's it's a matter of also um, tactics, sort of clever use of tactics along with the finesse to sort of combine and use and use those effectively. So that's that's another example I always connected with the Asalamiri being, you know, sort of brain over brawn kind of thing. Um, just as a <clears throat> Chicho coming first, being the sort of, you know, cutting basic, very straightforward style. Then you go into Makashi and you suddenly develop these t more complicated tactics that use sort of your opponent's strength against them. And that's that's the next step in the road to uh, yep. you know eventual yep. mastery of the lightsaber. Yep. Um, Shicho and Makashi together are kind of the two things that basically everyone really did need to learn because Shicho taught you how to use the saber, but of course once you learn how to use a weapon the first thing you're going to do is fig find other people who know how to use the weapon and test yourselves. And so Makashi is really the the natural progression from Shicho. It is, okay, now we know how to use it, now I, let's see who knows how to use it better. Um, yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Yeah. And, and from a developmental standpoint, too, if you're looking as the forms kind of come out of each other, it's... it's, it's Further sophistications on yep. um, on styles that makes sense as well because you're going from a basic, you know, I can cut you and I can block you cutting me to, as 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 uh, Jared said, more, much more tactical yep. kind of way, and that's where we can kind of segue, I think, into the whole offensive nature of of uh, Makashi that way and why it might seem like we're focusing a lot on defense. And the thing about this type of defense is it's not really a defense. It's, it, it's an offense, right? But it's an offense that's played in a long game, yeah. right? So you're not necessarily looking for, I'm going to hit him on the opening shot, right? What you're going to do is you're going to bait them. You're going to go through certain combinations. You're going to go through certain tactics to find out what your opponent likes to do and what they don't like to do. And then you're going to arrange it in, in, in that way. Um, Figure out what they're doing and by positioning yourself, your weapon, your body in certain ways, you get them to respond in certain ways. And if you are accurate in beating of them, this allows you to create openings in them. 
right. chunk them. Right. So, them so that's so, so that's the thing. The the idea that aggression and and offensive capability means attacking first. Not so not not, not so much. Um, now the reason we have separated it into the guards and, and all that kind of stuff is because that is definitely one of the easiest ways to kind of go about it. Um, can show as far as, um, let me put some gloves on. Um, that's not to say that this stuff doesn't go by real quick. We're not, when I say long game, I mean like we're not thinking about her chop and then it's over, right? We're talking about a, 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 lo a longer progression of stuff. Uh, yeah, you can put that on. Fighting on. Okay. So. Um, so we'll take we'll take the basic the, the basics here. First of all, stance. Why am I in attack stance? Why am I like this all the time? Right? Because when he comes in, right, I can just reach out. I can almost get my hand get his hand right there. Um, right. Okay. Coming through. Uh, I don't know, but whatever, <laughs> we'll, we'll go through here. If I, I, I'm going to be here, and this is my this is my guard position here for my for half moon, right? Now the guard positions, if we remember, are half moon here, full moon here, new moon here, and crest moon, and gibbous. Okay, so this is our gibbous region, crescent. Okay. From all of those, we pretty much get all the things. When he comes into attack, here we go, new moon, right? If I bring it around here like this, into full moon, and then bring it down into half moon, step forward back into ready, and there's where that strike goes. So, it's more boom. Like that. So it, it, we're talking as we as we were saying, finesse over strength. I'm going to beat it. I'm going to roll it around, and then I'm going to use the opening that I that that I create to make an attack. Okay. Now its lateral movement back and forth is going to is going to uh, serve that purpose. So if I'm if he's coming in, I can move back out of range of his, his weapon if I would like, right? If I do, I'm probably going to come right back forward, right? So, so if we take a Shicho attack, right? Um, I don't know what type of attack. Uh, a regular Cho here to the, to the shoulder, which is, a, which is a common one, right? Right? I don't have to do much. I just have to come a little bit over here. I bring this down here. I can go get one that has a blade that works, but uh, like that. And then I exploit the opening over here. Let's take one from the side, right? So that's that one we just showed you, right? Okay. So this is where we're coming from. The next stage in the uh, in, in the progression of using this weapon, taking little chops. We know that even if I parry on this side, he's going to come around to the other side because that's what the formula that he knows does. So I can exploit that, right? So as he comes in again, I know he's coming this way. So as he goes that way. I bring it up right here because that 
If I go here, as he brings it around, he's going to bring it right into his head. Okay? Boom, boom, boom. And just go through like that. That's about it. All right. So, we got some activity on the tubes, it says. Ben Heggy. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. At least the comment section won't be exploding. Maybe. I don't know. I hope it is. I don't, I don't know. And then, uh, E-Rock says mids are too flexy for him as well. So, we've got some supporters on that. So. Anywho. <laughs> But that was an examination of how Kakashi deals with someone using using Shicho and the straightforward um, right. chop, crunch, smash. Um, right. But the kind of the kind of the, the the evolution of this, as we've been discussing it, leads to more people also learning Kakashi, so you get into um, more of a, a similarity of combative styles. Right, so, uh, and that's where you get the duels, right, where you have long exchanges, and we can do just a, a little one, we'll just go real slow, get, a, get that flow duel a little change. yes, okay, and so after a while, what's going to happen is the other guy's going to realize, yeah, I want to get behind my weapon as well, right, and so you're going to have exchanges, Now, I know what a lot of people are going to be thinking. Right? Uh -huh, we have a new visitor here. Uh, Yogan, right? Don't let me pronounce your name wrong. I know you're pronouncing right. Uh, okay. Juan, you're muted. Pardon? There you are. <laughs> Let's try that now. There, there you are. Go. There we go. Technical difficulties. Yes, how you doing? Uh, I'm better now. Um, you know, typical chorus song. You can't find a speeder when you need one. Excellent. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, what, would you like to introduce yourself, okay? We were just uh, going over some of the stuff. Uh, take it away. Uh, sure, sure. No, not, not that I mean to, uh, to interrupt what you're here. Oh, your no, not at all. there. Not we just, um, we just reached a pause point. This is great time. Or, <laughs> take a breath. Uh, for those of you, aside from Craig, uh, who don't know me, uh, there we go. Thank you. Um, I'm uh, Juan, also known as uh, Yogan Himashi with New York Jedi. I am, I guess, what you would call a member of the the Jedi Council there, uh, help running operations and you know day to day decisions. All right. Yeah. Well. Good to have you on the program. Happy to be here. This is uh, kind of fun. Excellent. All right. So we were just uh, going over um, basically how uh, the uh, Makashi was going to deal with first, first of all, with a kind of more simple, straightforward uh, style, and then as as we're fighting with the others. Makashi as a response to Shicho, and then as a response to Hmm. Nice. So, yeah. Uh, and now we, we've talked and we played, and we've got yes. people sitting here yes. staring at us. Yeah, so why don't, we, why don't we open the floor here and see if anybody has anything we want to go. And I'll check, I'll check the other pages. Oh. Uh, I'll throw a couple of things out there. Uh, um, hold on, I'm just going to mute my. Uh, I'm hearing a little bit of feedback on yeah. All right. So uh, one of the things about uh, Akashi that really everyone knows that my main focus is you know seven forms and how they relate to how people enact stuff um, 
in at being a Jedi, being a Sith, being whatever in this phony baloney makeup land that we play in. Um, Makashi really is um, the dueling ethic. It um, it actually tells you a lot about how the Jedi handled lightsaber duels because they were really, they really were doing in warfare one on one combat. It really was. You see a champion on the field, you take him on, you fight, you handle it. First one that dies loses. Um, and or something of that nature. And it really was a way of, you know, it really was a showing of, it was supposed to be one-on-one -on -one combat, which, as we know, is sometimes impractical, um, to the point of stupidity. What's easier than having a one-on-one -on -one fight? A two-on-one -on -one fight. These ups the odds. But the ultimate point is that uh, Makashi really was developing an ethic of, you have two opposing sides, one of them has got to go. And um, most of the people who, you know, that's basically the ethic of lightsaber combat in general, uh, lightsaber on lightsaber combat, I think, is just, you know, you have two opposing forces, they meet, they handle it, it is settled, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I... I, I... I concur. Uh, yeah, yeah, I concur. Anybody else from the peanut gallery over there? Anyone? Well, I'll just I'll just talk a little bit about. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm I'm sure this is a. Uh... Oh boy. Sorry. So... <laughs> okay. That was bizarre. Can, can we okay, maybe I won't talk. No, I'm muting myself. No, look, can you try that again, Jared? Give it a shot. Sorry, is this, is this better? Oh, yeah. There we go. Go for it. Any, any better at all? Yes. That's much better. Go. Hit it. Okay. Yes, much better. Go Sorry, there's, there's, there's like a delay, so we're double delaying. Um, no, I just want to talk a little bit about the, the, the two origins of Makashi in terms of uh, in-universe and out-of-universe, just to give it some context so we have an idea of what we're looking at. Um, in-universe, uh, as we know, we've talked about this a few times, but it, it was Excellent. developed as a, an extension of, well, an advancement of Shicho, uh, just the next step in the line towards, you know, what, what lightsaber combat eventually became. And uh, it, <clears throat> it was created in response to the uh, Dark Jedi Sith uh, becoming more widespread, and uh, lightsaber on lightsaber combat became more of a common thing. So naturally, instead of a large-scale battle type uh, form like Shicho, you have these situations where you're dueling Sith one-on-one um, -on -one or something like that. So that's that's where it came from in the universe. So naturally, it's going to refine a lot of things into a more blade-on-blade uh, -blade contact specific method. Uh, out of the universe, uh, in terms of the movies, uh, we know it was basically just made up by people who sort of noticed a specific style with one of the characters, uh, in this case being Count Dooku. Uh, and, then, and that basically comes from the fact that um, Christopher Lee is uh, sort of classically trained in fencing for many of his movies. He was a uh, He's, he's a very he's a very classic actor. He's out, has a lot of swashbuckling experience, if you will. So that's that's where that background came from. Also, the fact that he's very old and can't do a lot of the acrobatics that a lot of the other folks can do. So they just sort of catered his style towards that, and that's why Makashi became Makashi, uh, because they kind of yep. just said, "Okay, Duku Makashi, good." So that that's just gives you an idea. of just sort of where it comes from, um, and where it comes from isn't even as important as where we take it. Um, so those are two different things in my mind, uh, in terms of like where where it, you know where it originates and and what we're doing with it. Because where it originates is so obviously somewhat less than uh, reliable as a martial arts uh, example, whereas like our our interpretation of it being 
sort of taking it out and using it in a real world setting. So, just yes. just a comment on. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree. And and um, yeah. I mean that and that's the thing when uh, you you take it out of you can take the in universe kind of stuff. I know a lot of people like doing that. You can take the real world stuff and put it here. And when you kind of mix them together, you kind of free both of them up from each other. So it, you get like a kind of whole new vocabulary to use. And and so now we can, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I'm starting to use the lightsaber terminology for my weapons training more than I am the traditional terminology because, quite frankly, it's easier. It's just, you know, because I set it up to be, you know, easy, easy to understand, easy to understand having, and spread without having someone right there all the time. Right, and and the, and it, that was cobbled together from stuff that I got through personal experience with teachers, and, uh, that kind of thing. So, if we if we if we look at the uh, traditional traditional fencing instruction and the, all the different parries, green, segunda, sext, mm -hmm. tears, court. The, the, all, all the different, all the different uh, Chinese nomenclature for the yeah. various guard positions and footwork. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's it, it gets a little overwhelming. Yeah. You, if you go out and try and find more than one of these, it's this this kind of packages it very nicely. Yes, yes, and and you you, you don't have to do so much shoehorning because it's not a set in stone anymore. Um, well, it's setting a it's setting up a language of its own, and it's basically not it's not telling you it, it's giving you the general gist and the abs the the ultimate idea. It's not giving you the ultimate you know the major specifics. So it's it's actually a common language that is you know that our phony baloney sandbox game has really developed. It's uh, you know I could say you know. Uh, Okay, and it's just you know you know it's actually sliced to take the midsection. My God, I forgot the marks of contact. <laughs> um, um, but you know it's you understand you start to understand the strike zones. You start to you know you understand you know a shiok to uh, to the shoulder is a stab to the chest. How you actually get there with whatever programming you already have in there, right? Actually makes it easier. So this is we've we've made we've we've uh, made a um, pretty much a universal language, our own Esperanto, pretty much to common, common understand. Of your yeah. Yes, yes. Ho hopefully, more successful than Esperanto. <laughs> 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 I, I, I think we might have a larger community. Than yeah, yeah, I'm probably. Not sure. But we don't yet have William Shatner. Yet. <laughs> yet. Yes. High so, enough paycheck, and we will. Right, right. Now, in, the, in our little exchange over here, you might have noticed us kind of going around in a circle, and some people say, ah, ha, ha, I gotcha. Uh, she only moves backward and forward. Yeah, sure, it moves backward and forward, but it would be of no use whatsoever if it was not able to pivot. That's like basically yeah. mounting a gun on something <laughs> without the ability to turn it, um, with no turret. It's position with no traverse. Yeah, right. It's just Put a post in the ground. Right. Well, that's kind of like, you know... That is, even if... What, what you're doing is when you're pivoting, is you're changing what your straight is. You're going off of their attack and coming in. So I can go around in a circle and use pretty much all of those moves or all of the guards, all of the, the steps... And not really have to worry about it too much. It's because I've got backwards, forward, left, right, backward and forward in, the, in, in those things, and then standing right in the middle. Tactically speaking, you, you want to be able to, to, move, to move laterally. From a developmental and instructional perspective, you would initially start by teaching just that kind of li that, that linear process, and then you begin right. developing movement right. in lateral directions. So right. We, we've discussed the developmental process of instruction before, mm -hmm. um, and so you know, again, we're, we're, we get a little, a little bit caught up in 
Kashi is fencing. Fencing is back and forth. Well, modern sport fencing is back and forth. Historically, no. Historically, it's wherever you had to go to, to, to survive the fight. Right. Yeah. Right. Swinging from chandeliers and all. Yes. <laughs> Swinging from the desk. Yeah, right. I don't think that would hold us. <laughs> um, once. Yes. It only worked no. once. <laughs> so, um, yes, uh, I, I don't see any further questions anywhere as of yet. Do we have anything? Uh, how about you, Yoga and Hard? Do you have any uh, anything to jump in here with? Well, well, um, I'm actually I'm happy you guys, you know, uh, mentioned that people tend to, to look for a specific detail in something and, and you know and call bull, especially in any kind of fandom where they think whatever they, that one snippet they've seen is the de facto all encompassing everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, any form couldn't be just linear or just in one direction, you go to any, basically most martial arts, when you learn it from the basic level, you're, you're learning, you know, a basic type of fighting stance and an attack and a retreat, a linear movement, but no actual sparring match, even in sport, you know, or, or competitive karate or taekwondo, none, none of these sparring matches actually move back and forth. They're circular. You're getting in, you're getting out. So it would be ridiculous to think that a saber form practiced by you know, the, the, the pinnacle of, of these practitioners would be a static event. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm fairly certain that if you look closely, even at contemporary uh, fencing bouts, you'll see that although they're going back and forth, there is some lateral motion within the strip. Yes. Yeah, I think... It's, it's, I, it's small, but... Yeah. Well, let, let's... We're bringing over to our resident fencing yes. coach. <laughs> It's it's true. Uh, it's I mean we're we're restrict, restricted by the strip that we're in, but uh, when you really look at it, there, there's actually quite a bit of movement made, especially with uh, less so with uh, saber that that I've that I've noticed personally, but more so with foil and epee, where it's a it's all thrusting, it's all stabs, so that it's sort of very important which angle you're at. You can open up things by being on different sides of people, so you know. Someone has this, you know, this target area open. All right, I'm going to move it to this side so I can get a better shot at it. Faint over here, you know, just sort of like position yourself. We only have so much to work with because it's maybe two meters wide, a meter and a half, two meters wide, uh, as far as as far as the limitation goes. But it, it definitely, definitely, Makashi definitely uses uh, some some lateral movement. I, I think I think the thing comes in uh, in that. It's it's so reliant on distance. It's so reliant on your distance from your enemy and like optimizing that, using it to your advantage, uh, controlling it. That's where the linear comes in because what you're working with is linear. It's 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 like Anonymous was saying. It's you're you're changing the the, the angle of your line, but you're you know you're still in a line essentially because you are the one coming at your enemy from whatever direction. And it's just it's just one of those things where you definitely have to learn to angle yourself because that will provide more of an opportunity for your attacks you know to, to slip through their defenses which is a very big important thing being you know subtle you know finesse based attacks that will slip through defenses rather than break through them or, or you know by you know bypass them from other means so oh no absolutely I think yeah. that I, what you're saying is, is, is really really great when you're talking about that, that, that really sums it up. Any of these things, the reason they're thought of as so linear and so straightforward is because they're so dependent on distance. I mean, if you look, look at our formula here, we got three spheres, and that's essentially the three different distances in which you are going to try to engage your opponent, right? I'm either going to engage them at sword tip, sword edge, or up the hill, right? And if you can, other than the pommel, hitting with the pommel, I mean, I don't know any other way you can do that. It's just the thing here. And um, when you're dealing with straight lines and, and the geometry of straight lines, you'll know that you deviate a straight line just a little bit, and it will go completely off of the target. So just a little bit of lateral motion can sometimes bring you so far off the attack that it's, it's like child's play. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. It's, we, we keep coming back to the talking about Rikashi and fencing. That there's a strong parallel. Okay, there is there is a strong parallel, but there's a strong parallel to Akashi and lots of straight. When I say straight sword, I mean straight bladed sword. Right. Um, straight bladed sword styles of combat. Um, and we're, we, we have a number of times tried to get away from tying them so you, Akashi is not fencing. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a good analogy to use. Yeah. Um, in my own, the, the Chinese things, they're, they're essentially the same. We have, we, we have the same, uh, the same, uh, 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 okay. We have the same kind of steps and all of that. Um, in in uh, in Chinese swordplay, we have these long forms that we do that they don't have in in uh, Western fencing too much. I you know there's the practice of flourishing, but. Um, a little bit different, um, and so th I think that might come with the the, the uh, where the contention of the contention form comes in there is because I'm assuming certain postures which may look a little odd. Uh, we get this that there's no slices in in Makashi. Well, if I have my blade going this way and somebody's coming in this way, and I have to engage their blade here. I have to bring this around through space to here, right? Just because I'm bringing from here to here, and if something happened to be right in the middle, whoop, I could cut it. Sure. The idea is that I'm here and I'm bringing my my blade to where I need it to go, rather than trying to like chop. Okay. So uh, that's why a lot of this stuff is done slow. Because it's not really about that. Uh, to kind of jump in, anonymous. Are all of these? Huh? Uh, Please. To kind of jump in on this. Um, well, it, it, like I said, going back in its essence, it's a dueling form. The idea is that it is lightsaber and lightsaber combat. And while it does focus on you know using the tip to stab someone, that's its preferred method of uh, winning winning any bout. It would be, especially with a weapon that is all blade and all cutting, it would be stupid to ignore the rest of the blade. For just so the the first the top part of the the light part of the uh, of the weapon, the the tip, the tip and the top part of the blade, that is the preferred area to to gain a point, to gain a touch, to gain a a wound to fight to finish the fight. But at no point should any duelist ever go. Well, I'm just never going to ever cut anyone because that's you know that would be wrong. If it means you can win, oh God, please tell me you're cutting. It, it just uh, it, you know what I mean? It's just right. like it's the it's preferred, but not it should not be yeah. disregarded. There's a line in a fairly well-known science fiction book: the tip can cut and the edge can stab. Right. Duncan Duncan Idaho Dune. Yep. And, and I think what it comes down to is is essentially the, the the machine that we're talking about here is not significantly different from one style to the other, or from one culture to the other. And though so the styles are not going to um, be all that much different. Um, and like you said, just because it doesn't often use. Slashes or this or that doesn't mean it can't. If I open somebody up, if I disarm them, boom! Right there, you go. Finish the fight pretty decisively that way. Does Makashi do this? Of course it does. Are you kidding? This is—I mean, this is this is the quintessential little sword move. You know, every oh, everybody does it. And yeah. we were talking about the pivot points of the blade. Oh, there's, there's your pivot point of the blade. Right, yes. So, and that's what we're talking about when we're talking corona, uh, chromosphere, and photosphere. Um, those three distances, you know, are, are, are the same. And, you know, like if I, if I, and I can go through each guard holding each one of these points. So I'm here, and I can go up like this, wielding from the, from the corona. Or I can go here, like that, chromosphere, 
And then, of course, we've got that. Notice that I don't let my, my blade go too far off of my center line. Now, obviously, if I need to finish a stroke, if I'm coming in like this, yeah, of course. If I'm parrying something down here like that, great. Okay. We have a couple of questions here that I wanted to get to real quick. Um, first of all, blade length. People are noticing my blade length. Yes, this is a 40-inch blade, so it's a big, long muddle. Okay. And I've got a pretty long hilt on it. Um, so you can see that the, you know, and I use this one-handed, so it can be done. Um, it's a 36-inch blade on a uh, Dominic's D2 hilt. It's a little bit shorter. Yeah. A little yeah. bit. And then the junior edition. Right. It's like a 20-inch yeah. blade. Yeah. I have a... Uh, are you coming out of the yeah. emitter. Um, <laughs> Shorter blades are going to be a little quicker. Okay, if you know, well, depends on how you use them, right? They're going to be a little bit quicker in in here at the photo screen, right? Um, here, if you know what you're doing, you can really make huh, you can really make this thing move when you have a long blade on it because it doesn't really even take a whole lot of, of motion to, to to move it through space. Um, all, all these blade lengths are applicable. Yeah. Um, do you want to go any longer than, than, than a 40 inch blade? I don't really see why. I'm not sure that the tubes come longer. I'm sure you could get them longer. Here's the problem you're going you're gonna to run into though if you go longer than 40 inch. As this gets longer it's going to start to bend. It's going to bow. Okay, even the 40 inch and if you can <laughs> Try to, you can probably see it bowing even just a little bit in there, right? So they they are hard, right? This usually, yep. uh, not too much. There's, there's too little, whatever. Okay. Anyway, as this gets longer, this is going to get heavier, and then as you hold it out, it's just going to go. You see that a lot with those gigantic... Uh, Odachis that you can get for real cheap. They go, oh, that's a huge sword for not a whole lot of money. Yeah, good luck. You get it out, it's 440 stainless steel. You, you hold it up and it bows over. And it just like hangs like a truck strut. Terrible. <laughs> but so that's that's where you're going to get you're getting the problem. If you want a longer weapon, I would, I would recommend elongating the hilt portion of it. Um, adding extensions and stuff like that, and then you can get that extra reach and everything here that you want without having to sacrifice blade stiffness. Um, that would be my uh, advice, recommendation, recommendation yes. Uh, anybody else got anything to talk about blade length? Well, see, um, to me, blade length has always uh, brought up the, the question of, of purpose and intent. Um, and this, you know, especially from where, the, you know, essentially the, the purview I'm coming from, which is basically exclusively the stage combat, it's all choreo, you know, it's, it, what is your intention with this weapon, with this blade, with what you want to portray? Um, just because you're taller doesn't mean you have to use a longer blade. Um, I know, I got a couple guys that, by about my height, 5'11", 6 foot, and they'll use a yoda size blade because they want to keep things really tight. They like close quarter work. They can almost use it collie stick style, except it'll cut your friggin' head off, which who doesn't like that? Um, I've seen a little four-foot midget, you know, use a full-size Darth Maul. Um, bless her for figuring that one out. That's even, for me, it's a bit too unwieldy. Um, that becomes your intent in what do you as the wielder really want to accomplish with this weapon? The opposite of that, from a stage combat uh, standpoint, for me is, as you were saying, too long a blade, you're gonna get bowing. You know, you kind of it's, and now you you're kind of shattering the illusion of this mystical weapon on stage to the audience. Uh, from a more practical standpoint, you always have space considerations you have to you have to keep in mind. How big is your stage? How crammed into that space are you? Maybe now your 40 inch blade might be a bit unwieldy for the guy's neck next to you, and you might want to go 
somewhere in the, the low to mid 30s and keeping movements really tight to the body um, for state demonstrations. So it really, to me, is always a question of, you know, what is your intention? This gets asked to the table at large at conventions all the time. It's, oh, you know, it's always, that's so cool. Uh, where do I get a costume? Where do you guys get your sabers? And then once you breach that, it becomes, well, what should I get? And I go, I don't know. What do you do? <laughs> don't, don't ask me what kind of car you should have. Maybe you like trucks. I'm a sports car kind of guy. I can't give you advice on that. A weapon's a very personal thing. And then are you using it as your belt candy? You know, there's something going to walk around town and, and have hanging over here. You know, you want to show off to the big boys like your big magnum there. Or, you know, is it something you want to use more practically, put on a show, or, you know, essentially what we all like to do, look cool in front of a crowd, um, and not shatter that illusion? Because the moment you've broken that, even though they know you're on some crap stage built, you know, by commie labor, um, you know, in, in this non-magical place called the convention, or polished concrete at best, um, there's still this this idea of if you can if you can really carry it through. Of these are the two Jedi masters, or you know, the Sith warriors, and this is this fantastical weapon. The moment you shatter that, no matter where you are, that that, that still carries through, and now becomes a practicality issue. So I, I always go back to what do you want to accomplish with this? What is your goal? And if you're not sure at this point, go something relative to your size, and you'll figure it out. <laughs> I, 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 I like that, that presentation, this concept, because that, that carries through into the functional applications. Um, what, what type of blade you're going to be using is going to determine how you're going to be using it in a, in a dueling situation, in a sparring situation, in a practice situation. Yeah, and it's not necessarily to say that um, there's one way to use each of these or whatever, like, uh, um, you would you would probably be surprised to see how small my practice space is at home. So it's, it's a little bit longer than that. It's a little bit longer. I'll, I'll give you uh, an outline. But literally, it's probably like about that wide, right, and everything like that. And, you know, I use these things here. I, I mean, I grew up but I started in the March Rose and I'm doing them in the apartments where I was in the apartments in Chicago. So, you know, um, I, can, I can use a six foot or, you know, seven foot spear in my home with, enough, with high enough ceiling. I could use it in here, right? You can know, low ish ceilings or whatever. That's not to say that you. That's something you're going to be able to do when you first start out. Right, right, absolutely. So, I mean, when you say I'd be surprised at your, your practice base, I, just from, from the presentation, I'd say I, I probably wouldn't. But I've, I've been watching you, you know, to not to start a pun, but, you know, handle your weapon there. Um, and, you know, you, you can see the control in it. Um, but, you know, you've gotten to that point. You can use a very long blade in a very small blade, tight, quarter manner. And you can use a short blade and really reaching broad strokes, even though you're going to land a bit short. Um, so, it, yeah, it all comes down to how you choose to use it. You're not tied into any particular thing, and I think that's always the best part um, yeah. from a performance standpoint. When people see one thing, they have an expectation, and then you completely demolish it by delivering something different, which is just, whoa. So, yeah, you can use the big blade in a very controlled manner, great. But, you know, you need to get there, um, which is great with, with things like this. Um, I tend to be a little more pragmatic approach because I've seen a lot of people get their heads cracked on stage. But we welcome all newcomers. Um, most of those guys can't handle a 30-inch blade without, you know, these massive arcs side to side. I mean, their, their figure eights are figure eights this way in front of them. They're not, you know, side to side, basically. But they get there. Um, so, yeah, it, it all comes down to to how you handle what you do. I can weave my station wagon through New York City traffic, and people in the Miata can't figure it out. Um, practice. You really can. Okay. So, uh, we got a question here real quick. We'll do. We'll finish this up here for Nero. Um, uh, do, oh, no, he's gone. Oh, wait, no, no, he's back. back. There he is. Okay. He's here. So we've got a question here for Nero. Um, do the per, are 
Are there preferred hit points or areas in fencing, and do they translate to Makashi? I found myself often jabbing at my opponent's feet when using Makashi. You would, if you start wearing helmets, you'll stop doing that. I'll guarantee you. Um, but anyway, go ahead, Jared. <laughs> Wear your mask. I can catch up. Yep. Waiting, waiting for the lag to. Yes. Finish lagging. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, uh, first of all, again, my internet is being completely ridiculous right now. I, I can't even, it's, it's chaos here. So, um, if I'm a mess and this comes out as gibberish, I apologize. I'll put it in Claire. writing later or Claire. something. But, um, yes, uh, fencing, uh, it's, I, I really should, I guess, release a little more on this, but uh, fencing has three different weapons, uh, foil, epee, and saber. And they have uh, different target areas. Uh, Epe is the entire body, uh, head to toe, literally everything. Um, saber is from the waist up. Um, it's 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 developed from the cavalry saber. Uh, you wouldn't want to. The idea being that you wouldn't want to attack someone's horse because it was valuable. You would want to capture it, so you would only attack from the waist up uh, to try and kill the horseman and not the horse. And the foil which is my specialty, my, the one I've fenced for so many years, uh, is only the torso. And uh, they, they, because of this and other reasons, they differ in tactics. But essentially, you know, lightsaber combat is a little bit more... I always say that it's like a combination of foil, epee, and saber. It, it really just takes aspects from all of them and, and makes it really more like a traditional uh, martial arts style It uses the you know, cutting from saber. It uses the entire body as tar because essentially it's it's a free for all. Anything you hit, you know, it's a lightsaber. It will cut through anything. You lop a leg off. That's that's a pretty pretty good way to start a fight. Um, so it it definitely takes tactics from all of them. Um, but there are different target areas, and and they're targeted for different reasons. I mean, you know, they'll to a different extent. They may not be a kill strike, but it'll be a good way to cripple your opponent weaken them, whatever. Uh, some are easier to hit than others. I like to I like to go for the front leg, the leading leg a lot of times, because, you know, fainting up high, letting your blade drop, it's a nice simple attack. Uh, it, you let gravity do the work for you, um, and you're you're taking a leg. It's, it's already exposed a lot of times, because a lot, many times people have it too far forward. They'll have their hands maybe too far forward. You know, it's just, you, you kind of tend to look for opportunities and make opportunities. That's that's another important thing with Makashi being, you know, you set up that distance so that you can step in and just make an attack and, and, and end everything. You know, cut, cut a hand off, cut a leg off. Even, even go for a stab to the torso or really anywhere. Um, so it's, it's kind of kind of a practicality thing. Um, the, the toe attacks, I, I'm not really surprised about that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, we've, we've, it, we've talked about attacks yes. to the legs. Yeah, the leg, legs. yeah. And, and the reason probably it's, it's easier to get in there is because if people are not wearing headgear, they're mm -hmm. omitting yeah. strikes to the head. Yeah. yeah. It really gives, it gives, that, gives it that opening. And even, even if you are wearing masks. Yeah, it's, 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 it's an open target. A lot of people... Yeah, yeah. It, it's, <laughs> people don't think to guard it. I, I don't think as much, but but it also, but it also opens you up pretty well, uh, which is which is definitely a downside to it. Anything that's going to put you in a position where you're at a disadvantage, where you can't recover as easily, it's it's touchy. Uh, if you, if you're very quick, and if you think you can, if your opponent is such that you think you can get that attack, that's that's all what Makashi is about. Is the, the fact that. You have to weigh your opponent and say, is this guy going to be able to defend? Is this guy going to be slow? Is this guy going to be quick? You have to think and you have to say, okay, make a decision and go for it. And, and do it with finesse and speed and, and you know, decisiveness. So that's, that's, what, that's what it's all about. It it's really comes down to the opponent. You know, it, it depends on this person opens this up, this person opens this up. You know, I, I, I'll fight Ed and it's, 
it's tough. It's tough because he's defensive too. He'll wait it out. First move, and it, it's not easy to do against someone who, you know, will block most of what I'll throw at him and, and see a lot of my stuff coming. So yep. it's, it's definitely depends on who you're, who you're facing. Yep. All right. Well, that brings us a little bit past the hour here. <laughs> we could go on about this for yes, which we will. We'll be back next well. week with more. Um, and we'll go more into the into that whole tactical aspect of it, um, where we're going to use those guards, spheres, and surfaces to start manipulating what's happening into the other person, using our steps to then capitalize it, and uh, we'll maybe even bring out some velocities and stuff like that. So, so if you have any questions, if there's anything about Makashi specifically that you want to see. Let us know. Yep. Post to Facebook, post to YouTube, uh, post to any of the Saber forums that we're free. Yep, absolutely. And uh, yes, so we will see you here, uh, same time, same channel. Thanks for showing up, everyone. Yes, it was a great, great having the, the panel here. Hopefully, we'll have a equally good panel for the next uh, next few shows, so we can get some more great conversation going. Um, so, from everyone here at Terror Pride. Uh, we will wish you a good weekend, happy sabering, and may the force be with you.